Hello, and welcome to the introductory product walkthrough video of TQ Systems Axe Auditor. As you may already know, Axe Auditor is a testing tool that DQ is using to record the results of your assessment. Axe Auditor offers both automated and manual testing from the same user interface. And since Axe Auditor is built on DQA and utilizes Axe Core, you can be confident in testing results and proposed solutions found in the final accessibility report. In order to get you prepared for your assessment results, we will look at a sample Axe Auditor report. In this example, we use DQ's recipe dashboard website for our report. It should be noted that the recipe dashboard website is a test website prepared by DQ Systems and is built to model common web accessibility issues. DQ performed an accessibility assessment on this website using WCAG 2.1A and AA standards. These standards are published by the W3C and are commonly considered the level of compliance digital products should meet to be the most accessible to the widest range of users and to have the lowest legal risk. The test information details can be seen in the Test Run Overview page in the Axe Auditor. To see an overview of the results, we can click on the View Dashboard button. To navigate to issues directly, we can click on the View Issues button. First, let's click on the View Dashboard button. Once we are on the Dashboard page, also called the Test Run Overview page, we can see a high-level overview of our website's accessibility conformance, the impact of the failed checkpoints on our users, plus the top issues that were detected. In our example report, we can see that the Recipe Dashboard website has a total of 22 issues and that we passed 63 of the 79 DQ checkpoints. Of the 22 issues discovered, we found no checkpoints that were considered total blockers for our users with disabilities. Our biggest point of failure were the three issues found related to color contrast. To find out more about each reported issue, we can click on the link in this graph. Clicking the link will take you to a full list of issues related to that impact level or checkpoint. Further down the page, we can see our website broken into components and pages. These are the test units we saw on the dashboard. Depending on how your website or other digital product is structured and what features you are testing, the number and type of test units may vary. If we look a little deeper into a test unit, we can see a myriad of information, including the name of the unit, the URL of the unit, the unit type, the selector that was focused on during the unit testing, if applicable, and any instructions for testing the unit. For example, login and password credentials. In addition to the basic unit testing information, we can see that both automated and manual testing are set as complete for the 79 checkpoints in the unit test. If we look at one test unit, we see that out of 79 accessibility checkpoints, this component has seven failed checkpoints, 62 passed checkpoints, and 10 checkpoints that are not applicable to this unit. To learn more about each unit, we can click the Review button to see the full checklist and their states. After clicking this button, it sends us to a page showing all of the accessibility checkpoints tested in the Axe Auditor report for this unit test. These checkpoints are broken down into categories based on the WCAG conformance level indicated in the report setup. As we scroll down the page, we can see the checkpoints are grouped into categories to help us identify areas that could impact one another. In our test report under 1.4 Distinguishable, we see that audio control marked up as not applicable. We're also testing for text color contrast. For color contrast regular text, we fail, but for color contrast large text, we pass. The information conveyed on this page is more general in nature and might not help us solve the actual failures found on the Axe Auditor report. If we want to learn more details about the failed issues, we can go back to the Test Run Overview page and click on the Issues Log link for each test unit. When we click this link, it opens a new page showing all the issues related to this particular unit, in our case, the Tile component. On the Issue Overview page, we see a table which includes the Issue ID, the Summary of the Issue, the WCAG checkpoint the issue falls under, the Issue Type, the impact the issue could have on a user, 
blocker, critical, serious, moderate, or minor, the method in which the issue is found, either manual or automated, the test unit the issue falls under, and the group name of the test unit, if applicable. On this page, we have a lot of options when it comes to filtering, searching, sorting, and exporting. For example, we could review only manual tests, or we could filter by a specific checkpoint. In this example, we are filtering by color contrast. Or maybe we want to search by the ID of the issue. There are a lot of different ways to find the information you need on this page. To export the data, you can select the issues you want to share and then click the Actions button to export the data into CSV or JSON format. The export will contain the same issue level data that exists in the UI. This export tool is especially handy for sharing data with those who may not have access to the UI or if you prefer to work with the information in Excel or some other spreadsheet tool. By exporting the issues to the JSON format, you can prepare the data to an upload to a ticketing system such as JIRA. To learn more about a specific issue discovered, you can click the double arrow icon or the issue ID number. Both display the same information, just one method shows it as a new page and the other keeps it in line. Since the information is the same, it comes down to user preference on how you want to drill down to this data. Once you're viewing this content, you can see the following information. Who conducted the report, which specific checkpoint the issue falls under, the issue type, the user impact, the method in which the issue was found, when the test was started and completed, information about the test unit, source code, description of the issue. This might include automated responses and additional notes from the tester, Recommendations on how to fix the issue, which also might include automated responses and additional notes from the tester. A view more information about this issue link option. By clicking this link, it takes you to an external AxCore rules page where the issue is explained in more detail. And finally, a comments section where you can add any additional notes that may be needed. If we go back to the initial page we started on, the Test Runs homepage, we can now click the View Issues button. This action takes us to the Issue Overview page, which includes every unit test and every issue reported by the Axe Auditor tool, all in one page. This page is similar to the Singular Unit Test page we saw earlier, but this time we are seeing all of the reported issues in one place. That ends our quick video tour of DQ Systems Axe Auditor tool. As you can see, you will be provided with a high level view of your assessment results, as well as the details your team will need to locate the source of the issues and tips on how to remediate the issues. We hope you found this video helpful in preparing for the delivery of your assessment results.